massive apology. Live Rock 62. Massive apology for the delay of making a video based on your request for how I fertilize and water my orchids. I'm so sorry. This is not an excuse. This is just me explaining. I'm trying to get my schedules correct regarding what I should be doing with my collection plus filming. So I, I'm really sorry. I shall do better because basically that's what this channel is about. I want this to be about you, whoever is watching this, whoever has questions, that I honor requests immediately and not get carried away with doing what I'm doing because while I'm doing it, I might as well film it. So please forgive me. I'm going to learn to do better now that I've figured out it's not gonna work the way I was thinking. It has to be the other way around. It's not what I'm doing to film. I can film it, but post it after. I need to get to your requests quicker. So really apologize. I hope I'm not too late. I hope that this will still be helpful and uh, know that in future, any kind of video requests will take priority and other videos will always just be pushed back and pushed back. So I'm really sorry. Um, like I said, I hope what I'm gonna show you will help. And I've pulled out a few examples as to what I do, how much I fertilize, when I fertilize, flush, etc. So let's get going. First of all, you see two buckets here. I have two different colors. The blue one is anything that's just plain RO water, no fertilizer in here. The green one is always a fertilized filled bucket. And I make these fresh every day. And sometimes I have to do it twice a day, but I'm now coming into the time of year where I don't have to fill two buckets a day. It's like one and a half, one, depending on how low my humidity is. And with the, what I do basically is, and we're only discussing potted orchids now because the mounts don't fit into this category. Sometimes they do, but this is about semi-hydro. In my case, I will also show some examples of self-watering because it's pretty much the same thing. Um, so no mounts in this equation. In one bucket, I always have 300 ppm of fertilizer. Whichever fertilizer you use, it really doesn't matter as long as it's quite balanced. I have 300 ppm of fertilizer. When I'm flushing or refilling my reservoirs or filling my semi-hydro pots, it is always a 5.8 in my case. And I say that with some disclaimer because my LECA, even if it stores six months in the water bucket and I've changed the RO water out in that bucket, regularly, I will always have a pH of water of eight. So my LECA goes into these pots at a pH of eight, which means that if I put in a pH of 6.3 into a reservoir, by the time it goes up, I don't know, it might be 6.5, it might be 6.6. .6. I do not know that. So I'm guesstimating 5.8 if I'm doing what I'm doing today. And for that reason, some days I know tomorrow my first bucket will have to be a 5.8 solution because of what I see in my pots, what I can hear on the outside, if it sounds hollow, if it's light, you know, you pick them up, oh, okay, shake them a little bit, all right, there's still a little bit of a wiggle in there, so I still have a reservoir. I don't always lift it out of the mass. But then if it's sort of empty, the orchid is also in sheath. Whether she is going to bloom, I don't know, but I see these as potential. So I'm still fertilizing as per usual. So when I have several of these pots on a go that I know that my first bucket is 5.8 and if I have to replenish, I do that. My second bucket is 6.3 because of the mounts. But in that way, 5.8, I'm sort of guesstimating by the time the 5.8 is wicking up and through the LECA, it will be at around 6.3, 6.4, and all the nutrient stages of absorption are accounted for. This is for growing orchids, orchids in sheath. 
all right? Other orchids that I, I didn't bring an example because they are all still full enough, but other orchids that, do, that are not growing, they're resting, they're not in sheath, anything like that. I only fill the reservoir with plain RO water. And sometimes, on occasions, there is seaweed in there simply because others were on a rotor of seaweed and I had some. I don't do seaweed as a rule every week. I do it because I have it and there's nothing wrong. They will always benefit whether they're growing or not. So that's that. Now, what I do, apart from seeing the weight and hearing it when I pick it up, I, yeah, I know the pots pretty well now. To double check, there's hardly any water left in here. All right, so I tip that out, just yay, it's warm. I can flick it out behind me, no big deal. Another thing, thank goodness, the microfiber is still damp. I have shown in some videos the examples of what can happen to roots when the microfiber has gone dry. Dry, wet, dry, wet, not good. Even if the reservoir is empty, the microfiber should always remain damp. And then I simply take it out and normally I do that over the terracotta floor because that raises my humidity a little bit. And this looks very primitive, but I make my life a little bit easier. This has now got some seaweed in it because I was doing other things already. So it doesn't matter. It's gonna be a little bit wasteful, but for purposes of this example, not a problem. What I do, either with seaweed or plain RO water, I take one pot and flush one mask and a half through the pot. And then I take the same mask and put it up to a level in the reservoir, which is, in my case, the mask has a certain height. It's only a quarter of the mask is the reservoir, not more. And that's what I fill with fertilized water. So that pretty much is my flush and watering done. I do not pour fertilizer through the pot because I don't want the salts to accumulate on the top because when it's warm, the top dries out really quickly and salts can accumulate. And that, that's not something I want to encourage. I had some serious problems with some older pots where I had these issues and it, that wasn't gonna work for me anymore. So now the microfiber is absorbing the fertilized water and she is good to go. Here is another example. This is my Epidendrum ciliare crossed with Brassavola digbiana. Same thing, the pot doesn't have much left for the size of the pot. Normally, I wouldn't even address this at all. But again, for the purposes of the video, and I don't waste, I take what's left, as that was a substantial amount, and I just pour through, ideally until it sort of rises to the top level. But this pot is relatively empty because I only just recently, let me put her back, I only just recently repotted her. So she's had a flush, and why did I put her back quickly this time? Because as it drains, I'm getting some seaweed water left in the reservoir. So why waste it? If it's not going to come out uh, up to the top, then I just quickly put the mask onto the, under the pot so that at least I save some and not be that wasteful. And then I top it up with fertilizer. Now I also know how high these roots are because she's been recently repotted. So I know that I can, I can fill the reservoir a little bit higher to accommodate a shorter root ball that is in there. And on top of that, you can see in this example, I have new roots growing. And this is something with my dry top layer that I'm able to, I do have the time for this. It's not something if I in future revert back to my old life, I will have time for and then I'll find another solution. But because of the new roots, I spray the top so to avoid a dry top layer with just plain RO water. 
but my RO water is at 6.3. Again, I don't take the RO water out of the filter just as is. I always pH down, even my plain RO water. That'll always be at 6.3. Why? It's a habit. It can be 6.5, it can be 6.1, but I don't go with 8.0 pH at my orchids. So that would be how I've just given her a seaweed bath and filled up her reservoir. My next examples are pretty, pretty easy because this here's my Lelio Harprophila, for example, and she is just in pure semi-hydro with ceramis and lava rock. She's one of the rapiculous kind. And she normally in the mornings just gets sprayed, whether it is with um, fertilized water or with plain RO water or with RO water and seaweed in it. In the morning, I spray her. I'm okay spraying this one with fertilized water because a couple of hours later, I do another round checking the orchids and then I spray her with plain RO water to flush out any salts that might have accumulated at the top. So you can see there's no crustiness on the surface. So that's how I take care of all of my semi-hydro based only orchids. I do spray them from the top with fertilized water, but I go around again so that I clear it up with a spray of plain RO water. So this one is growing, it's new growth, it's starting to mature it, it has a sheath. And this one obviously has been flushed a lot because I spray this one daily and there, it'll always seep her down into the reservoir. But it hasn't had a reservoir filled with fertilized water in a very long time. So that's what I'm doing now. Now I know I've got some reservoir in there with some fertilizer because it is in sheath. And that will then suffice until tomorrow morning again when I just go around with plain RO water because now I know it's got fertilizer in it. So very rarely do I need to flush these little guys that are in lava rock or just ceramics because of how I keep rotate, rotating their plain RO water. Dendrobium tetragonum has finished doing its thing for this summer. Only one new growth to show for, but now it's in kind of a stage of nothing. I don't like to call it a rest because clearly it's building up something. The new growth down here might be growing roots, doing something. But at this point, because it is such a slow growth, everything else has been done and taken care of, has been achieved. I am just going to give it seaweed and RO water. And the same with this one, I flush with my sprayer in the mornings. So I always have two on the go. One is fertilized, one is plain RO. And depending on what an orchid needs, they get either one of them. In the summer, it's very easy for me because I can go really hard and do my Rambo with a sprayer. Now I have to be a little bit more careful. I've got new growths coming or the orchid won't dry out or I don't have enough breeze or my humidity is higher. But normally a little bit of a targeted spray around the base is always as good as it's going to get because A, these pots are so tiny and when these orchids do finish what they're doing, it doesn't matter that you're constantly wetting it, especially when it comes to like dendrobium types. If I were, for example, to skip a beat and let this pot dry out, it's not that big of a deal. If it happens to an Oncidium type, yes. And we saw that example. I had a fantastic wildcat and uh, she's not, right now not gonna be as fantastic as she was six months ago because I didn't keep up with her watering needs, even in the self-watering system. But these guys, they're okay. I take a lot more care with my Rapiculus Lelius because they're all in a stage of growth except two, I think. So they are always getting, always getting fertilized water spray in the morning and then late afternoon, early evening, because I'm simulating the dew, I spray again with just RO water and now very carefully around the edge of the pot. That's all, just to give them that dew factor. So having said that, 
Here is a very, very recently repotted Rapiculus lelia, that's the Sangiloba. And you can see if I tilt her just a little bit, the reservoir is full. I hope you can see that because she's quite loose in her pot. I don't want to tilt her too much, but there's water coming out straight away. Now with this one in the mornings, I go around because she doesn't have many roots. I don't want to exaggerate any kind of fertilizing and, and burning a root or any kind of salt buildup. I just do RO water. And that was, has been the case for the past week. So today I'm gonna to fill up her reservoir with just seaweed as a little growth push and RO water at 6.3. As my ceramis and my lava rock are inert, and I only go up so high because I've got new growth coming, gotta be careful, I don't want to douse the new growth. So the, ceramid, the ceramis is dry when it comes into the pot. The lava rock is inert. Anyway, it doesn't soak in any kind of RO water. Sterilize it, lay it out to dry, put it back in its container. So here I can go with 6.3, and I know in the pot it will stay at 6.3. And that is all I do. So now I know that my weakest Rapiculus lelia has at least got a little bit of hormones in there to help her. And she really is my weakest. Then I let that drain out and put her back on the shelf. For top dry layer, I spray with RO water at 6.3 and sometimes there's seaweed in it. And for orchids that are not in growth mode and are sort of doing their things in the pot as opposed to above the pot, it's just RO water and sometimes there's seaweed. My margins are 6.3 and 5.8. And for the orchids that are in growth or in sheath, including in flower, I keep at 5.8 in the reservoir. And then I flush, as you saw, quite primitive. I take the mask, I use two times the mask, let it pour through, and then just fill the reservoir into the mask and set the pot on top, ready to go again. Now I'm wondering if I've covered everything and I cannot be sure until I hear from you. And that kind of, you know, concerns me. Oh yes, one thing I remember now. Winter, the colder months, when there is no growth, when there is no, you know, the, the temperatures are low. For me personally, I do not heat my home. So my home can get to 16 degrees inside simply because I need my doors open. I need to have airflow, me personally, so my orchids get that as well. So inside I can get down to 16 degrees and that's where my orchids also have to tolerate. But um, what I do with the reservoirs, for example, if the reservoir is the maximum is down here and then the pot, internal pot starts, I don't fill the reservoir to the top. In the colder months of the year, I will only have it down to half, basically just ticking over the wet factor of the microfiber and the leka. Not intending to water the plant as such, but not intending to let that microfiber dry out. So for the cold temperatures and when they are inside, a dull day and I don't get it, and they're not in growth, then I have the reservoir only half full simply to just keep the microfiber wet. No fertilizer, nothing. RO water at 6.3 because at the end of the day, there are no nutrients that need to be absorbed. That was the one thought I must not forget because I'm still so in summer mode, still got so much going on with my orchids. It's still quite warm, surprisingly, although we are in October, I'm really happy, no complaints, but colder months, I really, really dial down how full my reservoir is. Do I have orchids in the summer that are not doing anything and it's hot? Yes, but I keep them watered despite that. The evaporation is incredible and I don't want to have to do that every second day. I keep them watered. So even if they're not doing anything in the summer and it's hot, I still fill up the reservoir enough because 
that is what their leaves will need with the, all the evaporation that they have through their foliage. They need that. But in the colder months, definitely dial down. I think of, I must not let my microfiber dry out as opposed to my orchid needs water. So just that thought process. I hope that makes sense. And I think, I think I did cover everything now. There was something lingering in the back of my mind and it was the winter factor. So yeah, Live Rock 62, anybody else that thought this was interesting? Anybody else have any other suggestions what they do, how they do it in a similar setup? Let us know in the comments below because hey, maybe I can do better and I would appreciate also that heads up and we can all sort of chime in and let's discuss, be awesome. Okay, and again, Live Rock, thank you very, very much for your request, for your patience, for your support. I really appreciate it. And all the other requests I have on my desktop, I'm coming. I'm doing them. I'm going to get better. They're coming now, requests, thick and fast, one after the other. All right? Appreciate it, your patience, very, very much. I hope this was helpful. And again, the comments section is there for a reason. Anything, anything else that comes up, let me know. Let's talk about it. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, thank you for your request. Take care, stay safe. Bye.